Hey everyone, my name is Christine Lam. I'm a third year political science major. Last fall, I was the Cal Poly representative for the Panetta Institute Congressional Internship Program. This internship is a fully funded immersive program that includes two weeks of training at the Panetta Institute at CSU Monterey Bay and 11 weeks of interning for a California, con for a California congressional office in Washington, DC. This internship changed my life. As a first generation student, I never imagined that I would have the ability to visit Washington, DC, much less intern in our nation's capital. Nevertheless, it happened and I'm here to share my story with you all today. The process starts with a submission of application packets towards the end of January. This includes a Panetta Institute Congressional Internship application form, a resume, a recently graded paper, and all your higher education transcripts. The next step is a preliminary interview with a select group of panelists. You will be asked a series of questions ranging from your interest in public service to involvement on campus. If selected as the finalist, you will be then interviewed by President Armstrong and the final nominee will be ultimately selected by him. If selected as the campus nominee, you will then travel to the Panetta Institute at CSU Monterey Bay to hold a final interview with its staff. The Panetta Institute will make the final decision to, to determine if you are a viable candidate for the position. The internship starts at CSU Monterey Bay, where you will spend two weeks learning from uh, the top issue Oops, sorry, about the top issues in United States politics today, such as cybersecurity, fiscal and monetary policy, and immigration. Lectures will be held every day for this two-week period by individuals from various levels of government, such as local supervisors, to the former chief of staff, to the director of the CIA, to Secretary Panetta himself. These lectures provide the foundational knowledge for the current and most trending topics in politics today. You will be interviewed and placed in a California congressional office while at the Panetta Institute. Placements are done with the consideration of party affiliation, policy interests, and experience. After the training, you will fly to Washington, D.C. on the Saturday before your first day of work. A three-hour time difference may seem like much, but it is a lot considering you will be likely working at 9 to 5 right off the bat. I was placed in Congressman Harley Ruda's office, who represented the 48th District in California, encompassing areas such as Huntington Beach and Laguna Beach. In the office, my daily tasks included answering phones, stuffing constituent mail, conducting research, and giving tours of the United States Capitol. These tasks are essential to the day-to-day -day operations of a congressional office. As an intern, you have opportunities to attend briefings and witness Congress occur in session in the staff area. There are many instances where you will get a task that will completely make your month. For instance, I was once asked to help assist in the drafting of a House floor statement for my member. The staffer showed me her existing speech and asked for additions. I drafted a small paragraph and sent it to her, and a few hours later, I was able to hear my paragraph being read live on C-SPAN by my Congress member. In Washington, D.C., you will attend weekly seminars arranged by the Panetta Institute. These seminars range from issues such as economic and trade policy to congressional appropriations. Some of these seminars are held by members of Congress, as Congressman Ken Calvert, Congressman Jimmy Panetta, and Congressman Rodney Davis all spoke to us while in Washington, D.C. One of my favorite seminars was one held on House parliamentary procedure by the House parliamentarian, Thomas Wickham, in which I received one of my most prized possessions, a signed copy of the House parliamentary rules. Another story I will share has the moral that time is of the essence in Congress. One day, my staff assistant asked me to drop a bill off in the Democratic cloakroom, which is in the United States Capitol. Congressman Ruda's office is in the Rayburn House office building, the furthest House office building from the Capitol. I did not notice that a special orders bell rang, indicating that you had 15 minutes to drop a bill off until Congress went in session again. Congress went in session again in two weeks. However, the task was given to me about 10 minutes after the bell had already rang, but I did not know this. I started to head to the underground subway to the Capitol when a security guard asked me what I was doing. I told her I was going to the Democratic cloakroom to drop the bill off. She looked at the clock behind her, looked me straight in the eye and said, Honey, you have two minutes. Run. So while wearing brand new flats that were not broken in yet, I ran from the House Rayburn office building all the way to the Democratic cloakroom, a journey that normally took about 10 minutes. 
Thankfully, I was able to make it just in time, thanks to the Capitol Police frantically telling me to go the other way upon making the wrong turn the second I got off the elevator. They all cheered after I walked past them again, seeing that I was successfully able to drop a bill off. Upon returning to the office, a staff member asked if that was me, sprinting down the basement of the House office building towards the Capitol. Yes, that was me. Histories is unfolding as you are interning on the Hill, and it is something that you will always want to remember. During my internship, I was able to see the lying in state of Representative Elijah Cummings, see Vice President Mike Pence, and watch the whistleblower complaint unfold. The most memorable experience was that I was able to witness the vote that formalized the impeachment inquiry. Outside of work, you are in Washington, D.C., one of the most historical and political cities in the United States. During my internship, I never felt like there was a moment where I wasn't learning. All the Smithsonian's are free and each one deserves at least one full day of exploration in. These museums offer massive amounts of information not only on historical topics such as American history but also the arts and sciences as well. I also attempted to watch a Supreme Court oral argument, key word being attempted since despite lining up at 3 a.m. I did not get inside. DC also has an amazing food scene with a hint of creativity. I wanted to share my favorite restaurant names with you all. They include We the Pizza, Founding Farmers, Off the Record, Pound the Hill, and Presidential Scoops. Another critical aspect that made this experience so life-changing was the cohort you are placed in. Each of the California State Universities, along with Santa Clara University, St. Mary's College of California, and Dominican University will send one representative to this program. There will be 26 people selected in total for this program with various backgrounds, experiences, and political affiliations. You are going through this experience together, discussing politics, world events, and exploring a brand new city together. And you're stuck with them for 13 weeks. These individuals quickly become your family. And I am so lucky to not only have had this life-changing experience, but to have met three best friends while in this program. Also, who else would you convince to buy last-minute bus tickets to Philadelphia for the bus that leaves tomorrow morning with? After completing the DC portion of the internship, your journey is not complete. You will be tasked with writing a 20-page reflective journal and a 20-page policy analysis paper on an emerging issue that the current Congress is facing. These two assignments will not only reflect on your experience in Washington, D.C., but also reflect on your understanding of the processes of policymaking at the federal level. My biggest takeaways from the Panetta Institute internship is the concept of bipartisanship. Bipartisanship does not simply mean working and coexisting with those with opposing views. It means being able to converse and have discussions with individuals with varying political perspectives. My generation in particular has seen an increase in the concept of not wanting to talk to those with different political perspectives or being as even associated with them. This extremely harmful notion can have detrimental impacts on the future of our democracy. We must be able to have civil conversations with individuals from the other side of the aisles, not only to pass laws, but to become productive members of our democracy. To this day, I cannot believe that I had the opportunity to intern at the United States Congress. I have not grown so much in such a short period of time, and I believe that I came back from Washington, D.C. a new person. I was able to grow professionally, politically, and personally. This internship confirmed my interest in policy and desire to pursue a career in public service. I am now pursuing a master's in public policy here at Cal Poly while completing my undergraduate degree. Upon graduation, I intend on moving back to Washington, D.C. with some members of my cohort to work on the Hill, hopefully. One day, I may want to run for Congress. The results of this program and life-changing experience are extremely evident. Last year's Cal Poly intern now works for Senator Feinstein. Despite the 2019 Panetta internship ending less than two months ago, two members of our cohort have already landed jobs in congressional offices, with one of them being a leadership office. As for me, I'll get back to you on that. No pressure though, right? I would like to take this time to thank Secretary Panetta and Mrs. Panetta, Ed and Jan Sullivan, President Armstrong, the Provost Office, especially Jean Scott, for this life-changing experience. Whoever gets selected for this program will receive the utmost support from, this indiv from these individuals, pushing you to succeed every step of the way. Thank you.
So you guys have any questions? Yeah. Um, where do you live when you're, while you're in Washington, D.C.? You live in a hotel. So, yeah. Are you rooming with other, yeah. other people from your current home? Yeah, so you'll be roomed with uh, one other person, and I believe it's done randomly. Do you get a kitchen? You, you do, but you don't get an oven. <laughs> <laughs> You mentioned um, you did research, right? So like, what kind of research topics did you kind of dive into? Yeah, so um, one thing that I did was I did research on um, mental health regarding um, university campuses and potential things um, universities or like the Congress can do at a federal level. Um, I did some research also on um, transportation policy, which is a very broad topic, but yeah. Um, I think I saw that it counts for 24 units of credit. Yes. That's um, true. And how does that exactly transfer over? So it depends on your major. So you can talk to your department chair, but the political science department has been really receptive regarding my units. Um, a lot of them are being applied to my upper division and my concentration. So um, you should definitely talk to your department chair regarding how it applies to your degree progress. Yeah. Uh, can you talk a little more about like how you worked on your personal statement for the application process and what the interviews were like with uh, President Armstrong? Yeah. So the applicant uh, for my personal statement, um, I had a previous internship before I um, got the Panetta internship. So um, I interned for my local supervisor. So I talked about that experience. I talked about um, why I was interested in pursuing a career in public service. So. Um, I kind of told the story about how I grew up in San Francisco. Um, I had benefited from a lot of policies that were passed, such as after school programs, um, free bus pass policies, and how that impacted me and realized that, oh, these are policies created by government officials. So I made that clear. And then for the, um, for the interview process, um, you're, you'll be um, interviewed by a panel first if you move on to the next round and it usually encompasses a few members of the provost office, career services, and last year it was a representative from Salu Carbajal's office um, who I got to meet, super nice, um, he was great. Um, and you, you might actually get placed in his office if your political affiliations align and policy interests. And then for the interview with President Armstrong, you just, um, it's like an elevator pitch kind of, he doesn't have a lot of time, so just reiterate um, why you want the Panetta internship, and I'm not sure how many people are interviewed by him, so, yeah. Final two. Okay. Um, I saw online, sorry, I'm a little sick, but online it didn't say anything about GPA, but on here it says 3.5 or above. Could you, yeah. is, is that right, or, and also, like, how much does GPA weigh into the application process? So the GPA requirement isn't strict if you have a lot of community involvement, if you have a job on campus, or you have other commitments um, that is taken into consideration. So be sure to mention that in your application. Yeah. What kind of activities do you participate in on campus before your internship? Um, so I'm a mentor for the Underrepresented Students Network and PRISM. Um, I'm also in a lot of multicultural organizations. Um, I'm not particularly active, but I like to go to events and engage with people. Um, I'm in the political science club, but I'm not sure if that's, you know, like we, they meet once a quarter, um, but <laughs> yeah. What were you involved um, with outside of campus? Um, so I had a lot of series of internships before um, coming to Cal Poly, so I had, a lot, and they were all in the public sector, so I talked about that. Um, yeah, but I also had an internship at a transit agency, which, um, but I had it be, it was kind of a weird transition, but um, it was in the summer between my internship, but after they saw that I had an internship at the transit agency, they placed me with someone on the transportation committee, so. Just to clarify, it's during the fall quarter, so you missed miss that. Yes, you will miss it, but um, you are not not enrolled, so you will still get your scholarships, you still get your Cal grant, um, and you're you're in this like weird position where you're taking classes at CSU Monterey Bay when you're actually um, in Washington D.C. But your transcripts will come in as CSU Monterey Bay transcripts. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah. Uh, what were some questions that they asked you, um, if you remember, a yeah. long time ago, but, uh, during the interview process? Yeah, so they asked me um, what I was interested in, why I was interested in public service, um, my involvement on campus, um, and the, oh, tell me about yourself, and then kind of, tra I'd like to transition it into, like, oh, I think this is what they're going to say, but it's pretty, like, generic questions regarding um, public service. Yeah. yeah. Do you have to pay tuition in order to get the units to No, so um, the Panetta Institute covers all um, tuition-related expenses. When did political affiliation come into the question? Oh, so it only matters because certain congressional offices um, would only want to hire interns who ha are like registered Democrats or registered Republicans. Um, it's not something that the institute really cares about, but it's just for congressional offices who do have that requirement. Yeah. Um, throughout the, the um, selection process, do you think like most weight was given to um, your GPA, <coughs> the writing supplements, or your interviews? I feel like it was the interview. How many people do you think get to the first round of interviews? Um, I have no idea. Keegan, do you know? Um, not off my head, no. Sorry. Okay. Follow up to you, though. You know, can you expand on like the re what eventually became of the research that you did? Like, was it used in any publications or like for public policy, or like was it just kind of you did the research? Yeah. So um, how it usually works in um, in Congress is that uh, staff have assigned topics. And then, um, so uh, one staff member will be in charge of all immigration issues, but it's not just immigration, they'll be in charge of like gun control. So everything that falls within the parameters of those issues is delegated to that staff member. So they usually have these huge um, like files and databases compiling of all that information. And sometimes um, your, in your information will be um, included in that database and eventually maybe one day they'll be used. But as far as I know, I don't think my policies were or my research or was done. But maybe one day, you know? Yeah. Would you say that most of the people in the program already had a strong background in public service, or is it something that's more of like a learning experience for people who are in this? Um, I, there was definitely a strong mix of both. Um, there were some people who had um, two or three internships with con um, members of Congress already at the district level. But my roommate, actually, um, she has no political experience. Um, she was a transfer student. Um, she never had anything related to her major, which was also political science. But her involvement on campus and her minor um, led her to be placed in Speaker Pelosi's office. So it doesn't really matter um, regarding like your experience. It's just about how well you present yourself, your interest, and kill that last interview. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Is there any like, geographic priority for your hometown like, to be placed in the office? Um, the institute tries not to um, place people who have like an interest in the area, some, but sometimes it does end up happening. Um, some people did end up um, working for the district that they went to school in, or like the district that they lived in or have lived in. But um, so they try to do it like in an unbiased way, so you learn a lot about the district. Um, I have no connection to the 48th district in California, so yeah. My apologies if you, if you already mentioned this, but. Um are there any re letters of recommendation involved no. in the process? Yeah. From like the two weeks you spend in Cal State Monterey, what would you say was the most impactful part of those two weeks specifically? Um, I think hearing from all the different speakers. Um, so the institute brings a lot of speakers, and it's like school. It's like not college. It's like high school. So from nine to like five every day, um, you'll be learning from these amazing speakers who have so much experience and achievements done in their policy areas. And I think that the most uh, impactful thing was learning about their stories and how they got there. But most importantly, the lessons that they learned while serving their entire life in public service. Yeah. I don't know if you know the answer to this, but do you know why there's a limit on the number of units you can have, the, the 180 units? Um, I think it's like a graduation thing, but I'm not particularly sure. Um, I would ask the provost. The reason behind that is basically this internship, it, you can't do it after you graduate, or it can't be your last, like the last thing you do at Cal Poly. So basically, you have to come back for another quarter to finish up. So okay. don't people who are about to graduate to apply. So that's the reason for the event. Yeah. yeah.
I read that um, you can't be signed up to take the, uh, the LSAT while you're doing this uh, internship. Is that true? Yes, so you can't be committed to any other academic or um, employment related things while in this internship. They're very strict about that. Um, you don't want to be taking um, online courses as well, so um, they want your full commitment to this internship since they provide um, all the resources. Going off of that, if like you have previously taken a class but you just need to take the LSAT, is that also like not allowed? Um, when are you taking it? Probably early September. And but you'll be in Washington D.C. during that portion, so uh, you probably can't. But um, can't or can cannot. Um, well, um, we'll talk about that. <laughs> Does that include um, filling out applications to grad schools? Um, I'm not particularly sure on that. Um, while you're in Washington, D.C., um, they're pretty hands-off, but they're pretty strict about the rules. But um, I can definitely look that up for you. Yeah. Um, outside of your internship, um, so outside of the 9 to 5 time, um, while you're in Washington, D.C., what other opportunities did you take advantage of, um, or what things did you do with your cohort? Yeah, so um, a lot of sightseeing. Um, D.C. has a lot of things to see, certainly. Um, that was a terrible answer. But um, um, so exploring the city was a really big thing that we did, but also a, a lot of briefings. Um, after hours in D.C. is actually a really big thing. Um, staff members work for so long hours. They work like 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. and afterwards there's usually receptions or like briefings where you can just go and it's after hours and you get to learn from these top um, pe people from the areas and then um, yeah so a lot of receptions a lot of free food which is re really important in DC um, it's pretty expensive there so a lot of times lunchtime briefings um, yeah Yeah. I'm not sure if you've already mentioned this, but we'll, like, what's the application timeline? You said that the first application is due at the end of this month, but then yeah. how much longer does it? So the turnover time is pretty quick um, at Cal Poly. So towards the beginning of February will be the first interview, and then towards President's Day weekend is when you'll be int uh, interviewed by President Armstrong, and then um, w about week 10 is when you will be um, if selected, you will have the interview at the Panetta Institute and the provost office works really closely with you and your professors. Um, I remember having a midterm the day that I had my interview and the provost office completely got it changed and they was like, okay, fine, you can miss class, like not to worry. And the professors are super understanding of it as well. And you get reimbursed for travel. <laughs> What, talk about what the interview with the Pettis Institute that week was like. Um, that interview is probably the most like difficult interview I've ever had in my life, but it really prepares you for the rigor of the program. Um, it asks you a, a wide range of issues regarding your involvement, your background. Um, there's a mix of generic questions in there, but then there's also a lot regarding um, your interest in politics and what you want to do as a career and moving forward with the internship um, and your expectations when going to Washington, D.C. You said that it was fully funded by the Institute and that you lived in a hotel, but what about food? Is that something that you yeah, so um, there's free breakfast every day, and then there is um, free dinners provided every Monday and on Wednesdays, and some Tuesdays, depending on um, what the institute arranges by the um, hotel, but you also get a $750 um, stipend every month. Yeah, so I would, um, it depends on your start time. So sometimes um, congressional offices want you to come in at 8. Some people came at 9. Um, sometimes people would come at 10. And how many hours you work um, also depended on it, uh, the office. So some people got off at 5. Some people got off at 6. When Congress is in session, you might stay until 7 or 8. So typically, I would wake up um, around 7. 
and then you will coordinate this with your roommates, especially um, girls. Doing your hair takes a long time. I learned that the hard way. Um, but your hotel is really close to um, the offices. It's about a 10 minute walk. And then I would walk to, um, I would go wake up, eat breakfast, walk with my cohort um, to the Capitol. And then usually um, I would go to my office and then um, I would do morning duties, which included um, answering voicemails, picking up the mail, um, changing newspapers, um, a lot of intern tasks. And then um, depending on the office, um, I would do press clips on my assigned day, and then um, depending on what comes up in the day, I'll do research projects. Um, it, it just depends. Um, you're an intern, so a lot of times it's just sitting around waiting for the opportunity. So what you should do is um, do some research about your member, the committees that they're on, the bills that they introduced or passed, and then when the opportunity comes up, definitely be ready. Um, tours is a really big thing, depending on the office. I know some people who never gave tours. I personally didn't really mind giving tours, so I really enjoyed that. What have you learned about yourself throughout this journey? Oof. Um, I've learned a lot about what I want as a career, um, seeing how Congress actually runs and the life of a member of Congress has been something that I didn't really expect that to be their life. Um, every minute of their life is scheduled and they have a scheduler for that. I, it was a mind-blowing concept that they're so busy that they need someone to schedule um, every second of their life for them. But um, it made me realize that I want that type of career, but not long term. So I definitely want to work on the Hill. I want to start my career on the Hill. Hopefully that works out. Um, but maybe one day when I'm older, um, I may want to run for Congress. Hopefully things have changed a little, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, can you expand upon um, the two papers that you have to write upon coming back? Yeah, so the reflective journal is um, pretty easy compared to the policy paper. So every week when you're in DC, you'll have to do a weekly reflection like, oh, today, um, this week we went to a Nationals game and then we went to the Smithsonian and then you reflect on your um, experiences in your office like, oh, this week Congress was in session um, and I got to do X, Y, and Z or like, we weren't in session, but I got to do this. So, and there's a minimum word um, count. So you take a majority of your weekly reflections and then you make it so it's like a chronological journal. And it's just for the Institute to um, see your growth, but it's also a good way for you to reflect on your experiences as well. So that's pretty easy. Um, so for the policy paper, um, it's a 20 page paper regarding um, a current issue, the current Congress is facing. So it can't be an issue that Congress has done in the past. It has to be an issue that um, Congress is currently facing. So um, issues like immigration, gun control, uh, cybersecurity are issues, but you really want to narrow it down to a specific topic because um, the goal is to take um, pieces of legislation that have been introduced by the current Congress and make them bipartisan. So I did mine on election security. So I combined um, certain bills and so, um, certain bills from past Congresses, but I only used a few compared to the ones that I took from the current Congress, and I <coughs> took some things out, took some things out to make it bipartisan, and you have to explain why it becomes be bipartisan. And yeah, I can talk more about uh, my paper one-on-one -on -one since it's a pretty long process, but um, you can pick any topic you want, but the Institute really gives you a strong guide and structure of like what they want from it. Um, it's definitely a non-traditional assignment, but you learn so much, and uh, the experience in DC just adds to it. Yeah, so I understand that Panetta grades that. How does that carry over to Cal Poly or does it in any way? Yeah, so um, it's reflected in your transcript. So you take five courses um, in Monterey, like you get five courses and um, one of them is um, your internship, one of them is the journal, one of them is the two-week seminar, and then one of them is the policy paper. And that policy paper is that entire grade for that particular class. Yeah. Okay, so it says on the application that you need to submit a recently printed paper. Um, like, define recent. Because like, I haven't written a paper in like more than a year. Yeah. So could I, like, is it the most recent paper that you've written that's been created or? Um, it could be any paper that you 
um, written that has been graded, but what's really important is that um, your professor has written comments on it physically. I don't know if you guys ever took Professor Den Hartog. He writes like two comments. He's like, good work. I submitted that paper. It was fine. But they do read it and they do remember because in my interview, um, they said, oh, and you wrote your essay on this topic. So I would submit a paper that would maybe appeal more to like politics or like current events. <coughs> Add something on that. Uh, this has to be from Cal Poly as well. That way, our office can confirm that it was with the professor, that it was for this class and graded by them. So just to note that on that. Cool. And if you guys need help on your applications or want me to look over it, I'll be happy to do that as well. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.